Hey, I'm Joseph O'Neill, or the narrator. You can call me that, too. This is the premiere of Joe's podcast of stuff, I guess. Now, what is this premiere episode about, you might ask? Well, it's titled Animals and Humans, the new salt and pepper. Cute lo-fi music, if I actually knew how to edit. All right, do you know what an animal is? If no, well, why are you even on YouTube? And do you live under a rock? If yes, then you probably have a pet, right? If so, you should listen on because you should feel very lucky. And if not, you should still continue on and learn why you should have one. So imagine this scenario. What if there were no animals? Well, besides us, we're particularly animals too. But if everyone now petless, something seems gone. You and your pet, or future pet if you don't have one, but like cheese and crackers, something just clicked between you and them. Now, without them, you feel depressed and incomplete, including your friends and family. So, now that that's done explaining, I'm going to prove why there's lots of amazing ways humans and animals manage to help and relate to each other. First, you're probably asking this question, but Joe, what the heck even are your reasons? And to that, I will say that animals can be brave enough to protect their owners from somebody, I mean, something as dangerous as ferocious mountain lion. What's my reason, you may ask? Well, they're brave enough to protect their owners from ferocious creatures like wasps, ants. Oh wait, we're talking about ferocious creatures. Okay, like a mountain lion, as you can see in my example. What is my example, you may ask? Well, it's in the book titled Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls, where Billy, the main character, says, What I saw in my pups gave me courage. My knees quit shaking and my heart stopped pounding. I figured the lion had sent in my pups. The more I thought about anything harming them, the madder I got. I was ready to Die for my dogs, which is on page 46 in the Tepper 5, by the way. So basically, it's proving my point from earlier that since Billy is being helped by his puppies, which is who are protecting him for a nearby vicious mountain lion, he's basically convincing himself that he was ready to die for his dogs. It also shows how animals can be so brave to the point of standing up to vicious mountain lions. But anyway, now that we've gone over, go over that, let's move on to my next point. So, right now at the time of writing this, a certain pandemic you may have heard of has been unfortunately going shot for over a year at this point, and a lot of stuff has happened in the midst of it. <coughs> the election. <coughs> oh wait. But anyways, no surprise here, folks, because animals and humans are here to save the day. Alright, let me elaborate. So, thing is, animals and humans will always manage to provide well-deserved companionship to each other, even in the darkest times, just as the pandemic I'm currently in. Now, where's my evidence? Well, in the past, there's a little more people returning to dogs, cats, and chickens to cope with self-isolation by an unknown author. The also unknown narrator states, she, Kathy Shields, is also excited to have someone to talk to, even if he does not talk back. Taking care of him will also keep her on a schedule, which is on paragraph 2 in the passage, just in case you were wondering. It's basically for my point of Kathy Shields' pet is providing her companionship in very tough times, even if they can't talk back, and vice versa, minus the can't talk back part. Also, considering the recent, at the time of writing this, at least, events that you may have heard of were going on at the time. She really didn't have anyone to talk to, I see a man of an officer's in her house. Basically, she didn't have one exception to the inanimate objects, which is her, her dog, who was there to cover her during these very hard times. A little last, we need to move on to our third reason, which is, wait for it, an interview! So, who I'm interviewing exactly will be revealing later. Who will who will be revealed later? But all you really need to know is that if you had an animal, have an animal, just look at it. They might just change your life forever. But in a more clear way, my point is that animals, including yours, if you have one, are compassionate enough to humans to change your lives forever, and vice versa. Minus including yours, if you have one part. Now let me do this to my special guest, my mom. So mom, let me ask you these two questions. What is your experience with pets? And have you have you had a special connection with your animal in your life? Please describe it to me. What made this pet special to you? Well, if she was actually here right now, I'd ask her that. But at least I have these recordings, so let's play them right now. Alright, it might take me a couple of seconds, but I'll find them. Alright, I think I found it. Let's play it now. Hi, I'm growing up for dogs, and I'm a huge dog lover, and feel that my dogs gave me unconditional love, security, companionship, and laughter. I feel grateful for all my dog companions over the years. And, okay, that might have been not been the full thing, but who cares? And? My former dog, Kelly, was very special to myself and my family. We got her when my children were very young, so she was very involved and right in the mix of the family. All right. This basically puts my interviewer just to clip, specifically my mom, despite only having a single species of pet, pet, pets 
a pet throughout her life with her dogs, still became very attached to them and animals in general. Within all these year, those years, she was also introduced to unconditional love, security, companionship, and even, unsurprisingly, lots of laughter. Oh, was that all my free reasons? Well, now that I have finished with all of them, let's head on over to the conclusion. Alright, so you might be confused and need a refresh. Well, animals protect, comfort, and change lives. The end. Wait, that's too simple. Animals and humans help each other by protecting their owners slash pets from harm at all times, managing to provide companionship between each other even in the darkest of times, and even being compassionate enough to each other to change our lives forever. So, what will you do now that this podcast is almost over? That's really up to you. But my suggestions could go into your local animal shelter, or I don't know, pet code to adopt any kind of animal you want. Go to your local school, college, or town library just to, to just grab one of the many detailed books they have in animals. Or just go to where your where your pet is, give them a pat on the air, head, ears, or almost anywhere really. So are animals and humans really the new salt and pepper? No, this is mostly agreed on to be true to whoever you ask it. But some people out there might have a different opinion. So just leave your opinion in the comments below.